Look at what we have here, a ColecoVision. Connecticut Leather Company. That's what they started off as. And this system came out in the early 1980s. I think it came over to England around 1983-ish. Not too sure about that. I know nothing about the system. Never seen one of these as a kid. I don't remember this whatsoever. I'm thinking around this era, I might have had a Vic 20. So uh, possibly these would have probably been more expensive than that. But this was sent over to me by Mike from One Up Gaming Limited. And it's not working. But the fault that Mike said that he was having is different than the fault that I've got now. And I think I might know why that is. So it looks like we've got two little faults on this. But anyway, I've tried to tune it in. When I tuned it into the automatic channels on this TV, it came up with three different channels, but I've got nothing on each of them. So look, we put the game in here and we turn it on here and it definitely does something, but nothing's coming up. Turn it off and back on again and it's doing the same thing there. Oh, it's doing something different, hasn't done that before. Off, back on. Oh, this is slightly more exciting. But anyway, look at this bit here. The reset button is completely jammed down. So I'm wondering whether it's just constantly resetting itself. So I'm gonna bring it over to the blue mat and I'm gonna show you the email that Mike sent me telling me what was wrong with this because it's different than actually what's happening now. So I think we need to fix the reset button. And then once we fix that, I think we need to fix the original problem. But how weird is it? Look at the controls and stuff. Apparently this was a really powerful system at its time. It's also got an expansion thing here where you can plug in a steering wheel. I haven't got that. And apparently it can also play Atari games as well if you get a different expansion thing there. So a very, very interesting system. Right, so it says here, a ColecoVision. It turns on and plays, but is given a constant noise through the telly. I've taken it apart. The RF cable, which is this one here, actually just plugged into the console by a standard connection like the SNES and Mega Drive. So I swapped it for a different one. Same thing still happened. So in the Vince pile it went, which I'm very grateful for. So it looks like it's making a weird noise, but I need to verify that. So let's take it apart and uh, do this thing first and hopefully then I'll be able to get a display on my TV. Now, what's quite interesting is I was just looking at this power supply here. You can tell how old the plug is by the lack of insulation around these bits here. Also, bare wires there, so I need to sort that out. But look, we've actually got three power supplies on this here. Five volts, minus five volts, and plus 12 volts. So let's just have a quick check on that. Really nice and clearly labeled up here. Let's go to volts DC on the meter and pop that into here. So pin three is going to be 12 volts, which it is. Pin two is going to be minus five volts, which it is. And this is going to be plus five, which it is. So it looks like the power supply is just fine. It's interesting that they did it that way rather than doing the uh, regulation inside the actual console. So now let's take this apart. We're turning it over and it looks like Woodley Burks. Oh, other thing, look at this. Woolworths, 55p. How good is that? Woolworths used to be on every single high street, pretty much, in the UK. Until it collapsed. I think then it went online. I don't know if it's still online or not. But uh, yeah, Woodley, Burks, England. Right, so we've got various screws around the edge here. So let's undo all of them and then hopefully I'll be able to get access to the inside to free up this switch. Now, before I forget, a few people have been asking about an update for my son's dog painting. So there you go, it's coming along uh, It's coming along quite nicely. He does spend ages on it. I'm hoping he finishes this one because there's half finished paintings all around the house. But you can see there, it's really starting to, uh, really starting to take shape now, isn't it? Don't know what's going on here. I don't know how he's gonna hide all the mess around the edge. It's looking good though, look at those eyes. So I think I'll keep updating this in the various different videos and then that will put him under pressure to finish something. Evil, evil parent I am. Right, let's undo these. Right, while I'm getting in here, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. This month, that consists of kitdigital.com. Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, 
Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Rob Hughes, Felipe at MrKeeves.com, Dan Prutton, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, and Kiki Hobby Repair. So thank you kindly. Oh, we've got a nice little uh, petal in there. Right, let's take this apart. Oh, right, okay. This way round. So, now. Right, that just knocked back into place. That was there like that. So I think I just need to place that on here, like so, for the reset. You know what, we don't need the top cover, do we? We can just, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. They've used braid as an earthing strap. Well, I'm gonna plug this in now and see what it does. All right, so here we go. Let's turn it on. Right, okay, it is coming up, but it is, uh, oh, there we go. I'm just going to try to fine tune that. I'm just going to fast forward through it just to see if I can get rid of that sound, just in case it was a problem with Mike's TV. No, it's exactly the same. Right, let's try the gaming. Oh, there you go, Donkey Kong. Oh, wow. Right, okay, well. Looks like Mike is correct, so I think what's happened is when he reassembled it, that button just got a little bit uh, stuck, so it must have been just resetting all the time. But you can see there, there's horrendous noise on there. How we're gonna fault find this, I really don't know. If I had another one, what I would do is I would unsolder these wires here and put this whole module board from another one onto here, and then I'd know whether the fault's on here or in here, but I haven't got another one, so there's gonna be a lot of head scratching. But I think it's gonna be fun. Initially, what I'm wondering is, is the signal going to be composite going into here and then this converts it to RF? In which case then, could I see if the composite signal is clean? You know, the uh, yellow, red and white. So the, uh, for example, you know, could it be that maybe the yellow one is video and then these two are audio? I haven't looked into these whatsoever, whether or not people mod them change it to SCART, composite RGB or anything like that. See if we can work out what's going on. To begin with, I think I'm just gonna undo the screws and see what we've got. Maybe there's gonna be some water damage or something will become obvious. Oh, it's been soldered down onto the board here. All right, let's uh, get the soldering iron on and change the tip over to a big one. Oh, here we go, it's all labeled up for us, isn't it? Video, audio. 2 is plus 5, 3, 4, I don't know what that means, audio. I wonder if I was to disconnect the little wire going up, because we've got little wires going up here from those points into here. I wonder if I was to disconnect the audio from here. Actually, where does it come in? Let's zoom in a bit. Thinking if I was to get my speaker and go straight onto it, my Bluetooth speaker, would I be able to get audio out without the noise? Then we know that it's this that's generating the noise. So it goes up to that point here, which looks like the red one, doesn't it? I think it's the red one. One, two, three, four. So it's the bottom one out of all the wires. Yeah, so the red one. I suppose we could go up to here on the board and see where that goes to. Oh, lovely. Must be leaded. Just melts straight away. Okay. So we've got a little grommet here with the wires in. So, ooh, look at this. Got a little heat sink as well. Right, red wire. Red wire goes up to here. B and H is labelled up as. Well, let's undo this because there's a little bit of corrosion here on these screws. And that looks a little bit uh, chalky. This is made in Hong Kong, it said on the back. The video is this one here, the second one. 
blue one it looks like the blue one the blue goes up to here as well so what are these two down here for then the plus five is it just to give it power here we go look at this look at all the uh it's like it's shrunk you know the copper the copper tracks it's like they've uh kind of expanded and then shrunk again really strange everywhere you know i haven't seen that before is that an age thing or did it come out of the manufacturer like that it doesn't look too nice does it Right, I just want to see where these two ones go up here. So it was the red one we were interested in. Ah, it's where this capacitor's been put on. Yeah, the red one's the bottom one. So it's this one here. Now, is this is this a ground? Give me a meter to continuity. Yeah, that's a ground. I wonder, could that capacitor have failed? If I was to disconnect this wire from here, then we can, I wonder if I was to put my Bluetooth speaker probe on here and a ground, I wonder whether we could get the audio out from here and still have the video on the TV and then we could see if it's crackly or not. At least then we know it's okay up to here. I think that's probably a good idea. That's the red wire out. I can clean it up later on. Okay, so I've got my Bluetooth speaker here. And out of that is a 3.5 millimeter cable, which is just stripped back to here. So the black wire is gonna be the ground, and then one of these is gonna be like the left and the right audio. Let me just double check that this is definitely a ground here. So let's go here and here. Yeah, so I can just go between there and where it says H just here. So I've got my TV on down there. I'm just gonna turn it on to begin with, just to make sure that it's working. Now that's interesting. You can hear all that noise already, can't you? So even with that disconnected, we've still got a load of noise. Hmm. So it's not actually anything to do with audio. Do you know what? I didn't check whether there was any audio on the game. Let me plug a game in here. Right, so that's plugged in there. I'm not sure if the top one's number one or the bottom one. Controller number one is the top one, and that's two. Right, let me just turn it on. I know you can't see any of this. All right, picture's pretty bad as well. I can't hear any audio out of that whatsoever, just noise. No, okay. Now I'm just gonna mute the telly, because you won't be able to hear me. Now, let's, uh, it's still working, so let's turn this on here. And let's see if I can get any audio out via here. Yes, listen to that. Let me lower it down a bit. Let me try the white one. Shouldn't make a difference, should it? Oh, yes, listen to that. Oh, went off it. I got too much dancing. Yeah, I can move about. I just died. Right, okay, so there's no audio coming through the TV. Let's turn the telly off. There's no audio coming through the TV at all, but yet the board's making the audio. So that says to me, there's an issue from here forward. Just quickly soldered that wire back on there and just tapped the capacitor back on there. I haven't pushed it through. It's just resting on the top there. But I just want to see if there is definitely five 
volts. Well, it might not be five volts, it just says plus five. See, the, uh, the wires here, so it looks like the red is for audio, the blue is for video. Yellow is gonna be ground, because if I use this here, you can hear it's coming up here, and nowhere else, yeah. So the green one must be the power. Turn it on and see if we're getting, what sort of voltage we're getting here. Maybe there's some kind of weird voltage drop or something. And uh, that's why we've got the noise. 11.7 volts, okay? Now let's go between here and here, just in case there's a drop. 11.8. So that looks okay, doesn't it? Hmm. Right, let me get a lead. Now rather than hunting down and trying to make up a lead, I definitely know that this one works for my Sega Mega Drive. So why don't I just try this one? And if this is still faulty, then I think we can say it's not a lead issue. This one's a lot shorter as well. No, as you can hear, the same, uh, the same noise. Right, so it's not lead related. Let's have a little look in here. Well, that component there is broken, isn't it? I presume that should be the same as that with a little screw in that you turn up and up and down. Ah, here we go. This is the remains of it here. Look. There. Yes, that's definitely broken. Now, where's the screw from it? They must be what you use for tuning. So it's gonna have a little brass screw like that. Mind you, that could have fallen out years ago. I wonder, is it all to do with that? Would that one component affect it so badly that we can't even hear the sounds? Another bit of it here. I was thinking if I had the screw, I wonder whether I'd be able to turn it up and down. And there we go, and it's here as well. So it looks like we've got all the plastic. If I've got all the plastic, you think the screw would be here somewhere. Right, I know I shouldn't do this, but I, I'm curious about the screw, whether there's anything else underneath it or not. So I'm gonna count the amount of revolutions it takes to take this out, and then hopefully I'll be able to put it back in the same spot. One, two, 11. Right, so now, 11. I'm gonna write that down and I'm just gonna Pop this one in here. I know the top's all broken, but I'm wondering whether it would make any difference to the noise at all when I mess around with this. Here's the screw. Watch this. As soon as I go near that one there, look how it goes. Yeah. So by just having that in there, it knocks it out completely. So it's amazingly sensitive. Well, I think that's probably our problem. It's just that how am I gonna know what to replace that with? Look at that. Well, I'm gonna mess around with this for a while just to see if there's any way I can get any sound out of it because right now I've got it on, uh, on mute. Right, oh, that noise is doing my head in. Okay. Uh, I can see if we look real closely in here, there does seem to be a bit of white chalky stuff on the board. 
I mean, it could be possible that there's a bit of water damage in this side here. So let's see if we can take this board out to have a look at the underneath of it. So I need to unsolder these and it looks like I need to straighten them up. It's quite fiddly because I have to get the solder off and try to twist this. There we go. So I've got to do that to each of them now and then I should be able to get this off and then we can have a look underneath it just in case there's something else wrong with it rather than just that faulty component. That looks a little bit burnt there. Where would that have come from? That corresponds to that hole there, and that hole... Oh, this thing looks like it's broken as well. Here, look at this here. What has happened to this? Here. That's... Uh... Oh, wow. Surely the screw from here... Did it end up in here? One second, now this is here, look. Oh, and this here is like uh, ferrite or whatever, you know, like a magnet, I think, rather than, so maybe that's why I was putting a brass screw into it. Maybe it needed to be like a, a magnet type screw, a ferrite type thing. So is that it there, or is this one here broken? Has that gone into there? Let's see if I can push it back this way. Imagine if we put it back in and it started to work could happen couldn't it that is wedged in completely now that ain't coming out right uh, that is unbelievable what are the odds of that so it had to have come out off it had to have jumped out of this hole and gone into that hole. Wow. Right, well, that clears it up a little bit, so that one there mustn't be the same as this one. That must be made off this stuff here. Yes, yeah, the right size, that's what it is. Oh, it's getting more and more interesting. So I'm desperate to get this black ferrite thing out. I believe it's actually called a ferrite slug. Didn't know at the time of filming. And uh, I thought that I'd be able to just easily unsolder this component and it would drop out the bottom of it. I spent ages trying to unsolder this component. It was a complete and utter nightmare. I honestly spent over 10 minutes trying to get this component out. So what you see now is where I've got the component loosened enough where the ferrite slug is ready to pop out off the bottom of it. Yes, it's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. Oh, you beauty. Lovely, look at it. It's come out fantastic and relatively intact apart from that top bit. And that's just a bit you use to screw it down. Brilliant. Right, let's get some solder back in here. And then we can start playing around with it and see what's, uh, what's gonna happen. Brilliant, oh, I'm well happy with that. And I suppose the black bit here is just because this might have been just against it for ages. Shedding a bit of powder. Let's twist these back in because I'm not going to be taking this off again. If it's not working now, then we'll say that. Maybe I need to... Do you know what? I'm not going to solder these back on because maybe I need to look into what that component is and whether I can buy them. That's going to make a contact there now anyway with that. Yeah. Oh, 
I'm just going to solder that little wire back on. Pop it back together now and see what it's going to do. So we've got this one here. Imagine if I dropped it down here. Oh, I had to go through all that again. Right, which way does this go on, I wonder? I can see the slight remains of the screwdriver bit on top. Just there, so that would have gone on there originally. So let's screw it in this way. Really gently. Well, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, this was 11 turns, so I'm going to undo this one and do it up 11 turns. Well, I'll just keep using the Sega Master System lead. Okay, I'm going to plug it in and turn it on. And there is nothing on the telly. Hmm. Well, it's coming ever so slightly. Okay, I'm fighting a losing battle with this thing. The uh, ferrite core in the middle, or whatever it is, magnet, it's just not screwing down. I think the threads have just been damaged, so it's just kind of always tilting at the top. At this moment in time now, even when I take this out, the display is much worse than before. On certain screens, I can see it, but then other screens, it's just really snowy. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is call it a day on this RF unit here, because I think I've probably caused damage to this thing here now with all the wiggling to try and get it out. Two options. I need to look into whether or not this thing can have an AV mod on it. I can't, uh, a composite mod, I can't see why not, because we already heard how good the audio is coming out of this red wire here. So I'm pretty sure the blue wire can just be wired up to a yellow video signal. And uh, because they're separate signals, you see, and it's the RF modulator that makes those signals go down the one cable. So uh, two options. I need to look into that. And also I might look into whether or not I could possibly use an RF modulator from something else, maybe like a Mega Drive or some other system or something that I have, just to see if we can get it working on RF. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have a think about what to do and then I'll get back to it when I've made my decision. Right, it's the next day now and I have been a busy bee. So I gave up on the RF side of things and I've gone over to a nice composite mod and it is looking absolutely amazing so i've used two websites i'm going to show you them but i still had to do my own version of it because it was blurred the uh, the image was blurred but maybe i wired it up wrong but i'm going to show you both websites because without that i wouldn't have known where to start the first one here is benheck.com you've probably already all heard of ben heck and uh, he's on the mod here unfortunately it's for uh, an american version so i presume ntsc so it doesn't look really anything like the pal version when it comes to the rf and where everything's mounted and stuff so i couldn't use this but yet it was still useful to get to uh, see how it was wired up but the website that i found really useful for the pal one is this one here gamesx.com if you were to type in that's the website there if you were to type in PAL ColecoVision composite mod then you will find this one here and uh, it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail but it's amazing that you got this circuit diagram here and this kind of tells you everything that you need to cut. Now when I did this unless I wired it up wrong the signal on my TV was really blurred uh, actually worse than the RF signal it wasn't playable it was like a, a whole load of ghosting and I tried swapping out different resistors and stuff and I still couldn't get a good image so I've just been trialing different things and right now I've wired it up in a way that I've got a perfect signal and perfect sound but 
Long term, I don't know if it's going to cause damage to the ColecoVision or damage to the TV, because as you all know, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to electronics, but it certainly looks great at this moment in time anyway. So you can see here the red stuff is all the new stuff here, and how you have to put in a transistor and the resistors and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, massive thanks to Ben Heck and also this website here to guide us on this mod. But let me show you what I've done and then hopefully it might help you out if you want to take the risk and uh, copy what I've done. But please do your own research because I don't know long term if this is going to cause any damage or not. Right, so here it is with five meters of cable. This is just composite cable. It looks like cheap stuff, but it's actually pretty good because this central conductor here is nice and thin thick so there's going to be less loss on the cable remember this is analog signals so the better cables you have they will work better uh, so these are your audio ones and these are your video signals here so let's just start with the audio side of things because it's really really straightforward so remember earlier we had a red wire connected here where i took the audio from well you need to cut the red and the blue from the board because this red and blue is the thing that's feeding the rf down here we're not going to use this anymore i'm going to leave it all in here to keep it original but and put the shield and everything back on but this is now redundant the wires going this whole board now is redundant now this is going to be outputting in mono i don't know if there's a way to make it stereo on rf i presume it's just mono anyway so i presume the board can't do stereo but with these two audio ones the red and the white or in this case the red and the black same thing the two central conductors are going to go to this point here and the braid is going to go to the ground. So you can see the braid here has been twisted together on both wires and I've just run it down to a ground point here. These are all through holes so you can use a bit of wick to clean out the holes and just put them through, make it nice and neat. Again, this is through hole here and I've just connected up both. So the left and right are now together coming out of the one. So although you're going to be putting them into your TV on stereo, obviously they're getting the same signal. So it is just going to be mono, but at least then it's going to be coming out of both the speakers. So that's the audio side of things and uh, as far as I can hear it sounds amazing so that's nice and straightforward now when it comes to the video side of things I found it very complicated so I've just done a scribbled Vinci diagram and I'm going to explain that and then show it on the board and hopefully it will make more sense to start with we've got an existing transistor on the board Q24 which is this little fella down here what we need to do is we need to lift this leg up. You can see the shape of the transistor flat on this side and curved here. We need to lift up this leg, which is the collector. So we're lifting this up away from the board. This actually normally goes and feeds this point here, which was the blue one on the RF. So what we need to do is we need uh, three things here. We need another transistor. I used a BC547, which is this one here. BC547B, you can see there's other numbers associated with it as well, and it's uh, MPN, and you can see the specifications down there, so I use this one here, but there's probably loads of other ones you can use in place of that. And we need a 1K resistor, so a 1000 ohm resistor, and we need two 3300 ohm resistor, 3K3, 3300 ohm resistor, two of these. So what we need to do is we need to lift the leg of this one here, and this is our new transistor. So this is existing, this is the new one, the BC547. On this one, it's wired slightly differently. This is the emitter, the base, and the collector. This is the flat side here. This is opposite to this, which is collector, base, emitter. So on this one here, we need to lift that leg, and we need to connect it to the base of this transistor here. Then we need to, on the emitter of this transistor, we need to put a 1K resistor in, and this goes to our video out, the yellow cable. So this is feeding the video out. On this one here, the collector, this goes down to a five volt supply on the board. So you can pick which one you want. I'll show you which one I did. And then we need to put a 3,300 ohm resistor in between the lifted leg and this five volt power supply. So when you see it on paper there, it doesn't look too complicated. Also, R140, which is this resistor on the board here that I've left big so I can show you. Uh, we need to swap that to a 3300 ohm resistor. I can't remember from memory what that was. I think it might have been a 1000 ohm resistor. Can't remember. But anyway, you need to take it out and you need to put in a 3300 ohm resistor. So now you've seen it there, let me show you the bodge job that I've done here and hopefully between this and this it will make sense. So let's start from the 5 volt power supply. So I've taken the 5 volt power supply from here, near the switch here, this rail coming up, and you can see the top of this coil. And I've just used a bit of wire 
from the top of the coil, bit of wire going up here, and this is going to the new uh, transistor here. So if I move this to one side without breaking it, you can see that this is the existing transistor on the board here. You can see it says E for emitter on that leg there. The leg we lifted is this leg here. You can see I've snapped it off here and I've lifted it up to here. So this is feeding the base, the middle one of this transistor. And then the emitter of this transistor is going off to a 1K, so a 1000 ohm resistor, and it goes down feeding the yellow video signal. The braid for the yellow video signal is just connected to the ground here. I could have left that longer, it would have probably put this under less strain. And then from the collector, the collector goes off on a five volt supply and we're bridging essentially between the base and the collector of this with a 3300 ohm resistor, which you can hopefully see just here. There we go, so this is the lifted leg here and you can see it goes up. So the other two legs on the existing transistor remain on the board here. So hopefully that makes sense now. I know it's completely messy, but they're all separate from each other. They're not gonna short out. I've done a little bit of heat shrink and stuff. So uh, yeah, now let me put this back together. I'm gonna give it a little clean up and I can show you how nice the picture is. It truly is beautiful. So that's it here with the shielding back on. In hindsight, I should have used a different ground point for the video cable because I've had to bend this shielding out a little bit, not much, just about this much to clear the, uh, the ground cable there. But uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. So this is routed across here. I've put a cable tie on here. So when I put it back together, the strain when this is pulled here will be on the tape cable tie rather than going on to my new connections. I'll probably have to route this cable underneath here and along here to get it out of the way of the, uh, the casing here. But yeah, that's, uh, you know, the top casing that goes on. But basically, that's it there. I think it's gonna look quite original. So the only difference is, is the RF here. And then if it ever wanted to be repaired in the future, all of this is completely reversible. I haven't even had to make the hole any bigger here. And then a new RF cable can be just brought out here and the composite cable can be removed. So if it wants to be put back to original, it's, uh, it's no bother. Now I've got to give this beast a big clean up because in all the grooves, watch this, watch how much dirt's in here. Get out from one little pass. Let's try this one here. Yes, yeah, so you can see it needs one there, uh, one big clean up. Right, the console is done now and I'm just cleaning up the controllers. Now initially I thought I'd take them apart, but uh, to clean around the buttons here. But look, if you just get a little wet wipe, you can just slide it up from underneath it here and then pull it out the other side. And then you can do that and it cleans up all the pads, which is uh, quite nice. This thing is absolutely filthy. The console, so much dirt's come off it. But it's looking pretty good now. Right, so I'm gonna continue on with this and then we'll connect it up to the small TV, then the big TV. And I'll show you Donkey Kong working on the small TV. And I don't know what it was called, it's like Space Invaders. I think it's called Gorf. I think it's quite a popular game, but I've never heard of it myself. We'll do that on the big TV, I think. So here it is all finished and it's come up lovely. It's a un really unusual system. I don't know how popular they were in the UK, but I don't know why, I really like it. I really like this video and all I've done is do a mod to it. That was the, well, I think it was the fault finding on here and discovering that that inside bit had not only come out, but then got stuck in the other thing. I mean, the odds of that are pretty slim. Look how nice it is. So turn it on here, and I've got no thing in it at the moment, but look at that picture. How perfect does that look? There's no kind of, uh, as far as I can see, there's no ghosting or, or anything on that. It just looks amazing. I think it does anyway. Right, okay, so let's turn it off, put the game in, and listen to the sound. Oh, there's a little stain here. I couldn't get rid of that stain. It looks like a kind of varnish stain here. But apart from that, everything else, I mean, even on the bottom, you've still got the original original feet on the bottom here. It's all looking good. It's in very good condition considering the age. Right, okay, uh, turn it on. Right, and now we'll hit one of the buttons. Oh, it comes to this one here. And again, look, looks nice and clear. And hit one of the buttons. Look at that.
I think it looks good. And it sounds perfect as well. So let me get it up on the tripod and I'll show you the controller working. The controller is really weird as well. So this is the joystick and these are like the fire buttons here. It's really strange how the lead for the controller is so short. I know it's on like a telephone curly cord, but it still feels really restrictive. You have to sit so close to the console. Let's see if I can rescue the princess. Uh oh, down, down, down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. I can't climb with the, uh, how do I get rid of that now? Must have to wait for the music to stop. Yes, I think I'm gonna do it. Go on, go on, go on, up you get. Go on, go on. Fantastic, excellent. Right, so you can see how lovely it looks. Remember 1981 or whenever this was first of all brought out. Now I'm gonna connect it up to the big TV just to show you that it looks equally nice on that. Okay, so pop in gore. Turn it on and check it out on the big TV. Still looking good. I've got a force field here. Listen to the sound as well, it's fantastic. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, when you press, look, the bullets don't go as far. So if I press one, it goes all the way up to the top. But look, if I keep pressing, they're only going a very short distance. Now that's interesting. So if you want to get the ones up the top, you've got to just uh, really take your time. Wouldn't mind getting that flying saucer up the top. There's one more. I'm going to struggle to get him. Go on. Yes. There we go. So how nice is that there? Really, really happy with it. Let me just turn it off. It sounds fantastic. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was just a mod at the end of the day, but for me, it looks fantastic now, while before it looked not only did it look bad, but you couldn't hear any sounds coming from it. Shows you how important that little inductor thing is there. And it was funny that I was trying to put the screw into it and it was losing the signal completely. I really thought that by getting that magnet piece back or that ferrite piece back, that by putting it in, it would work, but it didn't. So I suppose it has to be really, really precise. But anyway, I'm pretty sure if I knew which one to put in, I reckon the RF connection would work again. But in doing this mod now, there's no doubt that it's a lot, lot better. So massive thanks to Mike for sending this out to me. A really, really unusual thing. Something that I would have never thought to look up and buy. I really, really enjoyed it and I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another Trying to Fix video very soon. Take care everyone. I was old, I was young, I was sitting in the sun. I was tired of the run, I was done Life was great, life was hard In a way an awful card You can't win the losing hand But the rain stopped falling And the line on the floor was crossed And the pain I'd been feeling 
washed away to return another day. I was cold, I was bold, I had fragmented my soul into pieces contradicting themselves. Perhaps it is, as it is, how the world is the mess, means that every heart and soul.